Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all viewers and students out there. Welcome to my channel. Uh, this presentation is on group consolidation and the focus of today's presentation is on intercompany transaction or the intra-group transaction, intra-group balances. And this is a part two of a video. A video part one is available uh, the link is available down in the description. And in this part two, I'm going to focus on a work example, which is work example four, showing how do we deal with the intercompany bills payable and bill receivable, which is one of the example of intercompany transaction that I have discussed in my uh, first video, which is the uh, video in part one. So go and check it out and have a go, right? So now let us look at this uh, illustration. This is the statement of financial position of a company called H. Berhad. And uh, uh, it is a separate financial statement of H. Berhad and S. Berhad. And the year end is 31st of July, year four. Uh, you have the bill receivable and only the bills payable as the item uh, being uh, our focus today. These are the additional information and these are to be treated separately. We are going to account for this uh, additional information separately and separate a consolidated statement of financial position, just the extract part will be prepared also separately for each of the transaction. So we have uh, five different transactions because it will illustrate five different scenario before you can uh, start doing the elimination of the undiscounted intercompany bills payable and bill receivable is where the case that the bills are being issued or received between group members, the parent and the subsidiary. So let us assume that H. Berha is the holding company and S is the subsidiary. So we have five different scenarios here and we are going to deal with it. After we have dealt with each of the scenario, we'll prepare a series of consolidation journal entries and a series of consolidated statement of financial position just an extract and that would be prepared as at as at um, 31st of July year 4 which is the the year end okay so we are going to take into account as I mentioned the separate uh, information from A to E so let's start but before that we'd like to do some uh, correction to this which is it should be here it should be as at 31st of July year 4 so that was just a typo there now let's go to the next uh, slide where I'm going to talk about work example 4a work example 4a that was just focusing on additional information a so we have bill receivable and bills payable and you are informed here, additional information A, H. Berhad is a holding company of S. Berhad, as I mentioned earlier. All the bills payable of S. Berhad, all. Bills payable of S. Berhad, all bills payable. So let me just take my color. Okay. All, which is re, uh, depending here. If you look at the amount that you have, 30,000, right? All 30,000 is actually intercompany bills. So, meaning that these are all intercompany. None of it relate to the um, case of the uh, subs uh, other than the uh, group members. All the bills paper are in favor of H. H has discounted 4,000 of this bill. Remember, in my first video, if you have watched it, uh, when we do consolidation adjustment, we need to do the consolidation adjustment for the undiscounted bill. So here, if you have the discounted bills, 4,000, yeah. So what you need to understand here is that the undiscounted bills would be 30,000, which is the bills, which are intercompany bills, minus 
4,000. So it should be 26,000. That is the undiscounted bill. So your uh, working is shown here. Bills payable was 30,000. The discounted bill was 4,000. And the undiscounted, which is intra-group balance that you need to cancel off is 26,000. And the consolidation adjustment is done to cancel off the undiscounted bills payable and receivable. So the bills payable will be debited with 26,000, the undiscounted bill, and the bill receivable of H will be credited with 26,000, leaving no bill receivable under H. If you have this balance, 26, and you credit here, first you have a debit, now you have a credit, so now it will leave to zero. So what you can uh, do now is you need to prepare a series of separate consulted statement of financial position. So the bill receivable will minus the undiscounted bills, 26. Bills payable will also do the same. So you will add up the one of the holding plus the one of the subsidiary and you will eliminate you will do the elimination for the uh, intercompany. Yeah, intercompany. Intercompany bills, which is intercompany transaction. Right. So the intercompany transaction is this. The one that you have here, undiscounted. 26 and 26. Okay, that gives you 20, uh, 9,000 for uh, the uh, bills payable and 35,000. You will not involve any retained profit adjustment whatsoever or the reserve or the schedule. Now we go to the second one. Second one is bills payable of S related to the bill receivable in H. And now you are informed, just go and look for the amount that is being discounted. So the amount that is being discounted is 2000 And you discount that with a finance company. So we need to find out what are again the undiscounted bills. So to find that, bills payable of S is 5000 5000 And then the, undiscount, the one being discounted is 2000 discounted 2000 so that leaves you 3000 undiscounted bill so for the adjustment you will do the elimination of the undiscounted intercompany bills debit the bills payable of s because it's uh, bills payable of s and that will relate to bill payable of h which is the holding company with 3000 when you do that that 3000 that you debit uh, will uh, that you credit sorry will reduce the bill receivable the one that you uh, actually debit to the bills payable will reduce the bills uh, payable so you have here okay there goes your figure 30 52,000 just add the one again of parent or of the subsidiary parent and subsidiary and do the elimination for the bills done with that next we have another scenario earlier our scenario was just part of the bills were being discounted it leaves some undiscounted bills let's see what we have here here is the case where all the bills payable that were issued in our in favor of s so meaning that all 30,000 here are all inter company transaction yeah and you are informed that H has factored factored or has actually discounted it to the financial institution all of the bill all means all 30,000 so here bills payable was 30,000 the one being discounted is 3,000 30,000 so it leaves nothing undiscounted for that reason the consolidation adjustment there is no consolidation adjustment why it is not applicable as there are no undiscounted bills so uh, the financial statement will just uh, the, uh, be combining in the group statement consolidated financial statement you will just combine the result of the parent or the holding company with the subsidiary 
the result of the holding and subsidiary. No elimination needed. Next. Next one is regarding this situation where you have another scenario, bills payable of H, which is the holding company, were issued in favor of S and here you have none being discounted, none. In example C, uh, everything was discounted, right here none was discounted. So when none was discounted, it simply means a silent. Maybe information is silent. It also means the same if the information remains silent. No information telling you whatsoever. You assume none of the bill will be discounted. So here, the undiscounted bills um, payable. If you can see here, it is talking about bills payable of uh, not of holding a uh, subsidiary, but bills payable of holding company. We are, the, we are referring to the figure here. So that 25,000, right? So the bills payable will not be discounted. So it leaves the same 25,000 here. So the journal entry will be for this undiscounted portion. So you will debit the bills payable of H because it is the bills payable of H, right? And you will credit the bills payable bill receivable of s let's do some er er erasing here okay so here you will reduce all right and this is the reduction the reduction right so it has 36,000. So all bills are not discounted. This is the last one, which is uh, bills payable in scenario 4E. In scenario 4E, you are informed included in the bill receivable of H, bill receivable of H is 26, is an amount of 15,000. And this is the intercompany bills. And S has remitted out of this, S has remitted 2,000, meaning that payment has been made. However, the payment was not received on 31st of July. It was received a few days later, this uh, payment on 3rd of August. So, meaning that this will give rise to cash in transit, cash in transit. So, for the cash in transit, what you will do is you are going to uh, cancel off the bills and you will record the cash as if the cash has been received. At the same time, you are informed that there were some bills that are being discounted. So let's see how we work this out. First, find out what are the bills payable. Bills payable here. Uh, if it's bill receivable of, of H, it means that it's bills payable of S. Of, or in other way, uh, you would also say if it's bills payable of H, it's bills receivable of S. So here is bills payable of S because it is bill receivable of H, the holding company. First is put the uh, bills payable, which is 15,000 of S. Deduct with the discounted uh, amount amount of bill that has been discounted 5000 so it leaves you with 5000 this is what being paid this is what being discounted what being discounted is 10000 so now what being paid is still not yet been received by the recipient uh, and it is 2000 the balance of undiscounted bills payable by S is 3,000. So the journal entry would be debit bills payable 3,000, which is the balance of the undiscounted bills. The part that you pay, you will debit to the cash or you can debit to cash in transit. You can debit to the cash account and you can also debit to bank. Um, but here I'm choosing the cash in transit 2000 and credit bill receivable 5000 where the bill receivable here is s this one is h 
So the total will be reflected to be 56,000 where this is due to the cancellation. This 3,000 is due to the undiscounted bills and cash in transit that has gone up or the cash balance is 2,000 because of the difference uh, in the payment of uh, 2,000. With that, that's it. I have already worked out several examples, uh, several different scenarios for bills payable and bill receivable uh, with the hope that that will help you in doing exam question relating to simple adjustment that should be done first, which is bills payable and bill receivable. Remember, intercompany transaction must be eliminated. And here, what you eliminate is the uh, undiscounted intercompany bills payable and receivable. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you and I will see you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.